I made millions running a drug ring and then lost it all. Was you ever involved in any like drug wars? The mafia mass murderer tried to kidnap me. Have you ever tortured anyone? <laughs> um, Your life sounds like a movie, but not a good one. Being a character in the nightlife scene is more addictive than the drugs or the cash or anything else. You come across very egotistical and narcissistic. What was the scale of the drug operation? I had about 200 people working for me. We were smuggling through multiple countries into America. The largest amount we ever smuggled was 40,000 pills. The pills were going for 25 to $30 back then in America. Did you ever come across like a bad lot of drugs? I was conscious that if we were importing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Exy pills over the years, someone could have a reaction to it. So we got testing kits. Nobody died off my pills. We would have known right away. I don't think it's possible for you to know if, to make a blanket statement that nobody has died ever taking a drug that you've supplied. Like, I don't think that's possible. Do you? It would have been reported on the news and it would have come back up the chain. I don't think you could say where exactly each and every single one of those pills whose hand that ended up in. Yeah, it's true. Um, anything could happen. Was you ever involved in any like drug wars? My competition in the market was the Mafia. They arranged a meeting with us and they said, look, we know you've got doing a lot of business here. We're moving a lot of product. Why don't you work with us? And I said, I'd rather stay with my own product. And the big guy jumps off the sofa, one call, two, and he named the famous Mafia underboss, and we can have you taken out to the desert. So years later, I met the son of the Mafia killer, and he said they had a bounty out on me. The Mafia mass murderer tried to kidnap me. We were on the streets, but the people I was with advised me to leave, and we left just in time to avoid these guys coming and trying to kidnap me. Did that not even make you slightly want to get out of it? There were so many situations signaling, you need to get the hell out of this. You have that sort of like greed driven mentality. I'd say ego more than greed. My ego was as big as the Grand Canyon. Imagine if you've got a million dollar house on the side of a mountain, you got a porn star wife, you got 10,000 people at a party, you're in the VIP room, people are coming up to you all night long, hugging you, thanking you for the pills. That's so intoxicating. I feel like I respect that you're being so open about your story, but for me, it is indirect and glamorizing it. What did you do before drug dealing? I, I come from a, a working class town. We didn't have much money. I was a business graduate. I arrived in America and I got a job as a stockbroker. Five years in, I'm the top guy in the office, I'm grossing half a million a year. How did you go from that to the drug dealing? I started out as a raver. I was just a participant at that stage, but it made such a big impact on me. I saw the business potential of not having to work the long hours I was working in the stock market and just having fun and behaving crazy. So was it greed then? Absolutely. Greed, ego. It is a bit sad though, because it's like you didn't really have much reason to start selling drugs. Being a character in the nightlife scene is more addictive than the drugs or the cash or anything else. You know, I had social anxiety and now I'm thinking I'm living in a movie like Pulp Fiction. But then also on your day to day, were you not paranoid to leave and leave your house? In the beginning, there's the glitz, the glamour, the fun, you're being carefree, you're out interacting with people. And there's the end where you're paranoid as hell and you are being tailed and you're not leaving your house at all. But it happens over the course of many years. Was it more dangerous being the boss of your sort of drugs ring or do you think it was lesser than the other roles? So it's dangerous at a different level. You're the head of the snake. So if they take you out, they're going to try and dismember the organisation. But then the foot soldiers who are in the clubs dealing the drugs, anything can happen to them at any time. So they're directly interfacing with all kinds of risks, which I was shielding myself from. Just sat in my house with my wife, waiting for my right hand guy. By not being out there doing anything, I wasn't exposing myself to getting arrested. You're meant to be the boss, you're giving all these orders, but you're telling me you're just sitting at home. 
how are people meant to know where to go and stuff? I'd structured it so that the, my right hand guy did all that for me. So then I'm not exposed. Did you never feel like guilty, like knowing that your right hand man could have took the fall for everything you're ordering him to do? No, because it was all ego and just keeping the party going and protecting myself. Have you ever tortured anyone? Um, I've not tortured anyone, but there was a situation whereby one of my bodyguards went off with my wife and they slept together and she told me everything. I had two of my associates. When I gave them the signal, they smashed him up with mag lights, strapped him into a chair, and I basically just made him confess. He was like, don't kill me guys, don't kill me guys. That was the main violent thing that I was responsible for. Your life sounds like a movie, but not a good one. What are your thoughts on these shows that do glamorize this like gang, drug, mafia lifestyle that you've lived. Shows that glamorise the drugs lifestyle often have the same story arc, okay. where it starts out in the beginning with the glitz, the glamour and the fun, and then it starts to get heavy. How did you eventually get caught? There was a wiretap, and then the SWAT team came and smashed my door down when I was on the computer one morning. My top dealer went to the cops. So he grasped you up? Yes. I had multiple charges. I was facing 200 years in a maximum security prison for drug trafficking. We got it down in the plea bargain. How long did you get? Nine and a half years. So, so what was the living conditions like in prison? When I was moved to Max, 10 at night is locked down and you see the cockroaches lining up in the cracks in the wall. As soon as the lights go out, they just flood the room. So you've got a choice wrap the sheet around you, so like a mummy, leave a breathing hole. It does keep them off you, but the sheet traps the heat to your body. As you're sweating constantly, your skin starts to turn soggy. So you get itchy and then you scratch yourself and clumps of your skin just come off under the nails. So you end up throwing the sheet off and letting them crawl on you. They get on your face, mouth. But the favorite place of all is going in your ears, to eat your earwax. It's like honey to them. I've actually been to prison myself, but in the UK. The living conditions you was in compared to mine are just totally different. Like the UK prisons, there's, I don't feel there's much help. There's not a lot of one-to-one -one help. What do you feel the differences between UK and where you was? Where I was, they're creating criminals and they're creating even bigger monsters. And these people get out and commit worse crimes. Low level drug use should be classified as a mental health concern. Kids should not be getting thrown in prisons with murderers and Nazis and gang members. What was your first conversation like with your parents? Seeing my mum in a prison visitation room and she's crumpled up and she looks way older than you remember then. You've done that to her. Mm -hmm. That makes me sick to my stomach and I've got to live with that for the rest of my life. How was that first conversation like on that visit? It was me just trying to put on a brave face, basically, because I was so heartbroken with what, over what I'd done to my mom, and I just didn't want to know that I was um, in an environment where people were getting their teeth smashed out, and the inmates were injecting heroin. They were at the end of the road of drug use, and the whole day just revolved around getting the drugs in. But when I sobered up and saw the horror of what drug use causes the people who are way down that road, I realised I'd put people on that road of drug use. So I felt responsible. I thought I was a wild and crazy party person. And now I'm housed with people who are 10 times more hardcore than me. So it was a very humbling situation. And I had to make a decision do I want to go down that road of hardcore intravenous drug use and end up, sadly, like these people are ending up, hepatitis C, yellow jaundice, skin teeth rotting out? Or do I want to get my shit together? And I consciously chose to try and turn it into the education opportunity of a lifetime. For me personally, I've seen how I've had people very close to me get addicted on drugs by going in prisons. And it's very, very damaging and triggering all around, right? Prisoners who maybe went in for robbery and stuff, then getting addicted on it, and now their life's just being completely ruined. What was your life like when you came out of prison? I had strong family support, and I was on the benefits system. Was you ever tempted to get back into it? Was you like financially, was you financially stable when you come home? Or were you struggling for money? 
I was struggling for money, but I've not even got so much as a speeding ticket since I've been back. I went on a radio interview and someone who coordinates talks into the school contacted me and said, look, come and watch me do a talk in the school and see if you're up for doing that. Part of my work now is I go into schools, I scare the living daylights out of them with all the jail stuff in the hope they won't do the stupid things I did and get involved in drugs and crime. What's your motivation for doing this? With the mask? Yeah. Because I felt I would be able to speak more freely about what I've done and the harm I've caused society. I find it really interesting that you said about like the whole narcissistic ego and things like that because in my personal perspective, that is how you still come across. You kind of feed off being that person that everyone's like looking at. You do, in my opinion, still come across very egotistical and narcissistic. I agree with you totally. And it's a lifelong work when you score high in narcissism yep. and egotism to try and get that in check. So that's something I have to work on for the rest of my life. I try and take that dark energy and do positive things. I reckon Fox is very lucky to be alive there. Definitely, I agree. Especially with what he's into, getting involved with the Mafia. It was very intense. At some parts it was like he was quite excited to tell the stories and that, mm. you know? He wanted to get out there. Some people are very extroverted and want that, like, you know, social status though. And I think, like he said, he's kind of doing it for good now. Yeah. yeah.